Okay, so guys, what I want to focus with you today is this equation solving. That's our main theme all along. How to solve an equation, meaning there is a variable or variables, and then you are going to solve for that particular variable. What I want to think of always is this theme for this whole chapter, union. All right, you want to put like things together. You have variable terms, you have number terms. What constitute as a variable term? This is what I'm talking about. This is called a variable term. This is called a number term, or we call a constant term. Okay, so let me just go ahead and label that for you so you know what I'm talking about. So this is called a variable term, and this is called a constant or number term. Okay, and let me put something on the other side as well. There, this is also called a constant term. Now, a whole chapter has to do with this concept. Unite something. Union. Right? That means you must have the same characteristic to be together. That's what I want you to stand out of this whole thing. And I also talked to you this before, and I hope you still remember now, is that when you are trying to remove a whole term, what operations are involved? Do you still remember that part? That's not <laughs> union. Union. Okay? So, what I'm saying is, if you want to move the entire term, what operations are involved? Moving a term or removing a term. What operations are involved? Yes? Very good. Adding or subtracting. Please, if you don't remember this, Write it down on top of your paper every single time you want to solve an equation. Okay, so if I want to deal with a term, the entire term, I'm going to be adding or subtracting. If I want to deal with just a coefficient, and do you know what a coefficient is? What do you know? Okay, how do you know if it's a coefficient and not a, a number? It has a variable right after it. So in this case, you know right here that I'm looking at right there, that's what we call a coefficient. And how do we deal with coefficient? Yes. Using division or Good. You either divide or multiply. And remember, for multiplications, if we choose to go with multiplication always, uh, what do we multiply by? Yes. The reciprocal. So please remember that concept. OK. Any questions so far? Always remember term versus coefficient. Whole term. I add or subtract to move. For the coefficient, I divide or multiply. Okay. Now, if you understand that part, I want you to go ahead and look at this right here. On the left hand side, we have what kind of term is this? Variable term or constant oh. term? Oh. Variable. variable. The 2x is a variable term, and the 5 is a constant, constant and the 7 is a negative 7 is a constant. So you see that this negative sign right here is acting as a divider. It's dividing the constant terms. I have constant term on the left. I have constant term on the right. If we are going with the theme of reunion or union, okay, what do you need to do to reunite? Do we see anything that should be together right now? Do you see anything that should be together on one side? The five and the seven. Very good. The five and negative seven, right? And, and we all discussed that last time, too, about moving things that are farther away first. And then things that are closer by will be the last thing to do. Okay? So notice, I'm like, okay, look, negative 7 is a constant term. I want to move this 5 over to join it. It's too lonely over there on the other side. Okay? So let's move this term over. How do I move the 5 over? Yes? Subtract 5. Subtract the 5. Because, remember I said that we're dealing with terms, it's either adding or subtracting. So we're moving the 5 over. For those of you who think about adding the 5, well, let's just reason it out. If you add the 5, are you really getting rid of the whole thing, or are you adding more to it? More to it. See, so that's not what we want. We want to remove it completely. So look, it's gone. And on this side, we have what? I think that's uh, two, that's seven. What is negative well, 7 negative minus 12. 5? Huh? Negative, 12. negative 12. Now, for those of you who don't like the vertical way, go ahead and rewrite it horizontally so you see what's going on. So negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. And I divide by two both sides. Remember, if you don't want to divide, you can certainly multiply by the reciprocal. That's fine. And so x equals 2? Negative 6. Negative 6. 
and that, that's, that's uh, our answers. Now, if you want to be sure of, our, of your answer, you can always take that negative, uh, negative 6, plug it right back into your x, and solve it to see if the left-hand side equals Times the right-hand side. So negative 6 into here will give you negative 12. Negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So you know you have the correct answer. Negative 7? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions on that so far? So still sticking with the same theme, union theme. Like things stay together. Okay, remember that part. I want you to see this wrong. Pretend that I have the fall in mind. Yes, please. Do you see anything that should be reunited? Yes. Yes. Okay, so here's my suggestion for those who are not clear. I would have two colored pencils. One green, one yellow, whatever, I don't really care. I would circle things that are like with the same color. So for example, the negative three X, is that a constant or is it a variable term? It's uh, variable. Term. Okay, so I'm gonna use green to indicate variable. Do you see any variable terms? So seven. 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 Good. I would circle. One negative, that. isn't it like I'm looking nine? at the term individually. Right? Individually. Okay. Anything else now? Do you see anything about, uh, the 5 and the 11. Okay, that is considered to be? Constant. Constant. So here it is. Any questions so far? No. So, light color will stay together on one side, right? Are they on one side? No. Okay, so let's get them together on one side. Wait. Yes? So you have to add the minus and plus in there? Okay, the signs in front of the number stays with the number, basically. That defines what it is. You see how? I have to circle the negative it, with the 3 to define it. It is a negative 3. So if I don't circle it, do you know it's a negative 3? You don't. I have to indicate that that's the I whole know, curve. but like how like it's like the negative 7x and then Point the 11. Six. Yes. It feels me out to just circle the 7x and then the 11 and left side of the middle. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. Right. But if you look at it as a whole term, a whole term, if I just circle that, you would probably take a minus 7x over, right? Because you would think this is a positive. What? Is it really? It's not, so be careful. When you circle, circle the sign in front of it with it too. Okay, so what? I have the green and I have the red. The red has to stay with the red, the green has to stay with the green. Can you determine where do you want to move? Do you want the green on the left or do you want the, the, the green on the right? I don't really care. The green on the right. Okay, the green on the right, fine. on the left. I don't really care, it doesn't matter. So how do you move this? To here. Add, My, mine is a plus. You add it to the right side. You see it? Now you do the opposite. It's fine. So there we add it to the other side. So we now remove five, it on the left. Five. We end up with five. Five equals, equals to eleven. 11 what is negative seven mine uh seven, negative seven x plus three? Negative four x. Negative four x. And look, we managed to have all the x's to one side. We already make a union, right? Yes. Is there anything that we want to move over now? Yes. Yes, what? what you do want we... to move the 11 to that side. Which is what side? Left or right? 11. Very good. How do I move the 11? So you have plus, just... I mean, minus 11. Oh. Minus 11. Very good. And so you end up with negative 4x equals 2. What is negative 5? Six. Negative 6. And last step? So. How? Um, I feel like it's a variable. Huh. Okay. Well, you can do reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of negative 4? Negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth. Okay. I'll slow down. Negative one fourth. I'm just doing reciprocal. Okay. So now that I have reciprocal, the negative four will be gone, right? X equals to what on this side? One. Look at that right there. What do you do? You multiply. Okay. So multiply. What do you have? Okay, you have 6 over 4 first, a negative times a negative is a positive, and then you reduce it by dividing each by 2, two. therefore x equals 2, 3 over, over two. 2. Wait, how did you get negative 1 over 7? It's not 7, no. this is 4. Oh. This is 4. Okay, so notice that when we have variables on both sides, they're all separated like that. What's, what's the, the general thing to do here? We want to... Make a union of it, meaning move all like variables to one side. Notice I'm using two different colors just to show you what you should be doing. All the red to one side, all the green to one side, or in other words, if you're going to be translated into an equation, all the variables to one side, all the numbers to the other side. That's what we want. 
But every time we want to move the entire term over, what operation do we do? Adding or subtracting. subtracting. That's it. So the first step in moving things you know, from one side to the other is by adding or subtracting. I, I don't want you to think of anything else for that reason. Okay. Um, if you want to just, just solve it, keep it simple. Okay, check this next one out. Okay, how do I do this? Oh, thank you very much. Notice that we want the x to be together, but the x is being trapped inside the parentheses. We have to free the x. How do we free it? Distributive, Distributive is your ticket out of the, the prison, in a sense. Okay, so whenever you see something like this, you definitely want to distribute to free your variable inside of the parentheses. Now, can, can someone help me distribute the first? Um, okay. Minus 10. Minus 10. Notice I moved the plus down, but then the negative 2 times 5 is a negative 10. Does that make sense over here? Yeah. Okay, so and then a positive and a negative is a? Negative. A negative. So please understand why it becomes a negative. Different signs equal negative. Yes. Equal and on the other side, is a negative 4x plus, plus negative 20. Which is minus 28, right? Okay. Can you identify like negative terms? 10, negative 28. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and circle. Circle. Anything else? Negative 2x and negative 4x. Circle, circle. So if you have two different uh, color pencils, this is the best way to do it. Now you know exactly what to do. Oh, I have blue over here on the left, blue over here on the right. I need to put them together. Yes. That would be great. It would help you organize. But for those who understand perfectly what to do, you don't need the color. But if you want to stay organized, I suggest you have two different color pencils. Okay. So now you know that, hey, I need to move the blue over to, to one side, and I need to move the green over to the other side. Yes. So we're pairing the constant. Pairing with the constant and the variable with the variable. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. So look, which uh, you want to move the green to the left or the green to the right? Green to the right. Okay, so let's move this to the left. Okay, fine, fine. We'll go and have it this time. We'll move it to the right. How do I move this to the right? Have it. Add two x to the two. Add two. Yeah, add it. Okay. Notice that I put it right underneath the x, right? Because they need to stay together as a family. Yes. Is this gone? Yes. yes. So, so what you end up with now is negative ten okay. equals two x positive negative two x. Negative two x minus twenty eight. Now, if you are confused, I would suggest you write it out. Negative four x plus two x. Add twenty eight on both sides. Okay. Uh, Kevin, go ahead. Okay. So then, now you add twenty eight to both sides. Okay. Why are you moving it over? Because what do you want? You want to you make want, a what? Wait, what? You, what want, do you, what? you want to make the two. Yeah, yeah, combine you make it by itself. Combine like terms. Right. You want variable by itself. Right. Very good. <laughs> Combine like terms too, right? You want to union, unionize your constant with constant, variable with variable. So this is gone. What would this become? Positive 18. Positive 18 equals 2, negative 2x, right? Make sense? Yes. Divided by negative 2, x becomes? Negative 9. Okay. Is there anyone here to understand what I'm doing up here? Is that a, a better in the sense of using different color to show you what to do? Yeah. Okay, so please, on your homework, if you want to do it that way, to help you organize, do it. Yeah. Circle all the variables term different with a different color. Circle all the constant term with a different color. Then now you know where to move stuff. Is that all? Okay, are we clear with this? Yes. Okay, then I want to introduce something called... Yes? Okay. Um, are done? I'm not done yet. I have something to introduce to you, and it's called identity. Okay? Uh, let me show you why it's called an identity. It's going to make perfect sense when you see it. It keeps its own identity when you add it. Well, you, you see what I mean? Um, not good, you done? Yeah. Okay, here it is. This is what I'm talking about. Watch this wrong. There's two special cases. Okay, I want you to see this wrong. First of all, you see. Your x being trapped inside parentheses. What do you do? Distribute. distribute. So I'm going to go and distribute that. I have 2x plus 8 equals 2. 2x uh, two two plus, plus 8. eight. OK, now what do you see this? Is there anything strange with this problem? Yeah, they're the same. Oh, the left-hand side looks exactly 
like the right hand side. So is this two okay. X? First of all, do you recognize this uh, property at all? Symmetric. Not symmetric. What's it? Reflexive. The other Reflexive. Oh. But here we call this an identity. Here's let me tell you the reason why for it. Listen carefully. Why do we call this an identity? Reason is because notice that identity. the left looks exactly like the right. So does it matter what number you plug into x? Will oh. it always be the same zero. as zero. Yes. zero? What do you mean zero? They all just cross each other out. Okay. Well, you want to do that? You're right. But notice that whatever I what number, whatever number I plug into x, my end result will always be any number. Any number will be the same. the same thing. Because look, if I plug in x with the uh, number five, I would have five times two, which is ten, ten, ten plus eight, 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 which is eighteen. Over here, ten. ten plus eight, which is eighteen. So it doesn't matter what number I plug in, I will still have the left equals the right. So therefore, we call this an identity case, and an identity case means. All numbers are, are considered to be your solutions. Okay, all you have to do is all numbers. There's no specific answers. You have infinitely many answers. So when you come across a problem that has identical terms, then you can just stop. You don't have to solve anymore and just say, oh, that's all numbers are real. Okay, so they all work. It keeps its own identity. Right, very good. So notice the left keeps the same identity as the right. Okay. Isn't there a second case though? Yeah, okay, I'll show you the second case right now. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? No, no, this is what it is. If you solve for it, everything will disappear and you get a zero with a zero, right? That's what I'm saying. Here? No, no, no. This is the true case. Watch what happened with another case that I want to present right now. Okay, Lisa, relax. Here we go. Watch this. I have 2x plus 8 equals to 2x. There's still a line right there. Okay. Now, if you look at this problem right here, do you see any variable terms? Yes. Okay, I see 2x, I see 2x, but, and then I see the constant term right there, but that's the only thing that's left, right? Can you close the door for me? Okay. What do we need to move over? The 2x. Which 2x will we move over? To the right side. So you want to move it to the right side. Good. So how do I move the 2x over to the right side? You subtract it. Okay, watch what happened. Subtract it. Gone. Gone. You have 8 equals 2. Zero. Zero. That's false. Oh. So notice what's happening here. Oops. You cross out everything, and then the answer here says eight equals zero. No. Does that sound weird to you? Eight equals zero? Kind of. Yeah. So it's absolutely weird, right? So eight cannot be equal to zero. Whenever you come across a case like this, where all the variable variables are crossed out and the left hand side does not equal the right hand side, this is a case where you say no solutions. False. It's false, right? It's just a false case. Do you know everything? Yeah. For real. Okay. We clear with that, people? Yeah. Is this hard? No. It could be hard. If Wait, I wasn't paying attention. What happened to the second eight? What do we second eight? There is no second eight. This is just a typical equation. I'm giving you. That's exactly. I'm saying that if this happens where all the variables got canceled out and your left is not equal to the right, that's a false what case. Is, where, so you say no solution. Like huh? Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. Right. That's correct. Because the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side, you say no solution. Okay. 